Uh, okay. Um, I was going to just do some follow-up on the National Radioactive Waste um, site selection process that's underway, if those folks in the room are happy to do round two. I know you'd have been disappointed if I hadn't. Um, I'd also, maybe at the outset, just like to acknowledge that under this government we actually have a process rather than a unilateral point at a spot on a map and then try and smash it through. Yeah. Um, process. Uh, isn't perfect, but at least it gives us something to work with. So I'm happy to be on the record in that regard. Um, I forget which one of you it was, and I can't see all of your name tags. Um, it might have been you, Mr. Wilson, acknowledged that the um, the panel is actually meeting today. That's the third third meeting. Okay. Um, I'm just interested, firstly, in the process of shortlisting uh, nominated sites for a national nuclear waste dump, the nominations process for shortlisting has closed, I understand. How many nominations did you get? Um, at this point, Senator, the... We've already had that question. Yeah. We've already had that question. And, and the, the answer was? The answer was that it's still part of a process. Okay. And um, that uh, they're not going to release that detail. Okay. I, I'm only saying because it it's been asked before. That's all right. Well, we'll move on. I don't want to duplicate because time is short. Um, the department website notes that there'll be a 60-day notice period once the shortlisted sites are announced. How, does, how do you intend to inform the public about the shortlist? Uh, there's, I think, um, under the Act, there's a requirement to lodge a notice of that intention. Um, so there'll be a, a gazettal notice and presumably some press notice at the same time. Okay, press notice is bunged on the website. You're going to put it out there so that people can find the list? So, Senator, the, the Minister is required to um, uh, uh, announce the, so the nominations that he's considering moving forward with. We're, we're sort of shorthanding that into a, a shortlisting uh, okay. description. Um, when those sites are released, there'll be a gazettal notice, there'll be press uh, notice, but it will also be accompanied by um, uh, a process of consultation with the nominated or the shortlisted sites. Okay. Um, the details of that process, we are still working through exactly how we plan to do it, but there is a, a, a upfront commitment that uh, there will be consultation with those communities in that right. period. I want to go to that directly then. Um, <coughs> do you intend to directly contact stakeholder groups to inform them of the comment period? I'll just give you one example of what's already happened. I'm reading about this in press. If my understanding is incorrect, please feel free to correct me. About a site uh, in Western Australia that was nominated by a mining company on some land that they hold some form of title to without letting a registered native title group know that that existed. And that Native Title Mob found out about it in the newspaper. Um, that's not the government's fault. You're not in control of that process. But do you intend to inform people directly if land that they have an interest in uh, has been shortlisted for a radioactive waste dump? Uh, I, again, well, Senator, we, we have covered I, this earlier and, and today. I'm a bit cautious about speculation about sites that are listed in the media. Um, that's not what I'm doing. I well, want to know whether you propose that, that's, to... That's the characterisation that you put on no, no. it. You Do you said... propose to inform you... groups in affected areas? That's well, the direct question. It's not hypothetical. Senator, as I've indicated, we haven't exactly uh, nailed down the process by which we will do the consultations uh, in the areas where the shortlisted sites are, but I think it, uh, it would be fair to say that our... our the government's commitment is to ensure that anyone with a direct interest in that site um, is aware of the shortlisting and consulted in that process. Okay. How that will occur, I can't yet say. But there are three and state that's jurisdictions with your earlier that answer. currently have legislation precluding a national radioactive waste facility. So WA, oh sorry, four, WA, South Australia, Victoria, and the Northern Territory have some form of legislation that actually prevents a national site being established. Um, we. Uh, Presuming you're not automatically ruling sites out of consideration if there's a, an existing legislative veto, but how do you propose to handle sites that have been nominated effectively in contravention of state or territory law? Well, earlier today, I asked a question, could I, they 
tell me where the sites have been identified for the length and breadth of this country, because I'm interested too. And the department officers said at this stage, while they're going through this process, they weren't prepared to identify any of the states or territories where they're getting applications That's from. Not, but Senator, it's not the question that I've just asked. Can I just get an answer to my question? And I will absolutely go back to the transcript if this was addressed earlier. But how do you propose to handle site nominations? You don't have to tell me where they are. I'd like you to, but I presume you won't. In states or territories where there's a state or territory legislative ban? Um, Senator, uh, the, the act on which the low-level waste and intermediate storage facility w is, is being pursued does have uh, override provisions that technically allow a site um, to be established. Uh, set against that is the minister's commitment not to um, impose a site on a community that is fundamentally um, right. against it. Now, the interaction of the state, any state laws in possible sites that might be nominated and are taken forward is something that we will have to deal, obviously, with the state government and, or the territory governments uh, in, in those instances. That would be a process of discussion. Um, uh, how that plays out and, and how that might be resolved, uh, I can't speculate on at this point. Okay. I just have a quick question on the tender process. So I understand that there was an information session held here in Canberra on the 15th of May for possible tenderers to assist the department in, in building, building the facility, wherever it winds up being. Um, which companies attended that briefing and what follow-up communications have been held? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, Senator, just uh, a correction on the, um, the way you put that. It was, okay. It's not a tender for companies to help build the facility. Okay. The, the tender was let to identify companies that um, will work with us for the, through the next phase, which is the uh, detailed site characterisation, okay. so the project management uh, around site characterisation the development of the detailed business case and the safety case, um, and much of which the information from that will flow through into the, EP, the Environment Protection Biodiversity Conservation Act All approval right. processes and the PANS Act. So it, the contract was not let around uh, tendering it. for construction. That is an important distinction. Thank you very much. Um, so who attended that uh, briefing and what mm -hmm. follow-up communications have been held since then? Oh, Senator, we'd have to take that on notice. Um, I think it was reasonably well attended. Um, yep. Of course, um, that is only part of the tender process, that briefing session, and, and we are obliged, I believe, to make the, the details of that session uh, uh, widely known on our website anyway. On, so on Oztender. On Oztender, sorry. So that what was discussed at that, um, brief, at that briefing session should be available on Oztender, I can certainly check that and take it on notice. Yeah, if you could. And also just who the attendees were, I'm presuming that's not a state yeah. secret either. Look, my final question regards continuing levels of confusion, some of it at quite high levels, about the nature of the project. So Premier of Western Australia, Colin Barnett, asserted that the wastes were not radioactive. I think he subsequently amended that to claim that they were only low level. Uh, the Premier is not the only one guilty of mischaracterising <coughs> what this facility will be for. Um, has the government or the department corrected that issue with the Premier? It's kind of important that people understand what it is that's, um, that's in play. Uh, not that I know of, Senator, no. I think that would probably assist if you're, you're trying to get consent on something that's been... Are you, are you going to verbal the officers now about what they should and shouldn't be doing in their department? Or are you going to ask a question? I think it's not to anybody's benefit to well, have you know, people at the level a of a Premier of a state ask a question, mischaracterising. And I don't think it's necessarily the responsibility of a department to tell a Premier of a state what to do. We, Chair, we'll take it on. No wonder people are confused parents. about this thing. Well, they're not confused. Well, the Premier said it confused. wasn't a radioactive waste dump. That I, seems I know. like confusion it, to me. <clears> well, that's an issue Words for, are weapons that's an in issue this business. That's an issue for the Premier, okay. not an issue for this yeah. department. Um, just finally from me. Um, do you have any uh, idea of the cost of the planned facility, separate to what's in Anstow's budget at that, the moment? That question was asked yeah. earlier as well. Cost? I, yeah. I think, I think we, we agreed, Chair, that it was very speculative and depends on a range of things, so we're not in a position to even go there at this stage. Right. 
Okay, just finally on notice, if you can explain to us the operations of the proposed community benefit fund. So whatever you can provide for us, and I'll, I've used up enough time, uh, given that the Commonwealth and the host jurisdiction are proposed to be exempt from facility use fees, just the estimated amount of annual income or contribution to the proposed fund, just at least orders of magnitude at this early stage of what we'd be looking at. We'll, I'll take that on notice yeah. and have a look at Much that. Much appreciated. Thanks, Chair. Thank you very much.